Hello and welcome. My name is Deborah Guthrie and joining me today is Cameo King. She is the owner of Good Girl Radio and the founder of Grit, Glam and Guts. Yes. 3G, right? Yes. 3G is in that. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited you're here. You are here. We probably did an interview maybe five years ago or on coffee break, like yes. a long time ago. And I've been watching you grow, uh, listen to some of your podcasts, um, watching your uh, grit, glam, glam, and guts grow. Yeah. So I remember yeah. when it first launched. So uh, before we, we talk about some of that, for, first, please introduce yourself and uh and what you're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so again, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to be in your space. It's an honor to be on home TV. And um, so at the heart of everything I do, Deborah, is to really allow people to have very transparent and honest conversations. And that's where Good Girl Radio was birthed, where we have conversations between women about life. You know, everything is on the table. Nothing is off the table. Um, from culture to faith to relationships, everything is on the table. And we're really allowed to let our hair down um, mm -hmm. and talk about some things we go through. And then Grit, Glam and Guts, it's kind of like a teen version of that where we have annual conferences across the state where teens come in um, and they have workshops about self-esteem, about things that matter to them. And we also do academic programming as well as a week-long camp at MSU. How did you get started with us? Um, was there something that happened that led you into this or? Well, storytelling is also a part of what I love mm -hmm. because I believe in honest and authentic conversations. So much growth comes out of that. You can really feel someone's um, energy. You can feel, you know, their spirit. You can learn from mm -hmm. someone's authentic truth. And I've had so many conversations like that between women. I wanted to share that with the world. Um, and that's how Good Girl Radio was birthed, especially, you know, my background is in media, worked as a producer, worked in radio as well. And um, I wasn't seeing that type of conversation mm -hmm. um, in different places. And so it's literally I was at work one day and I heard a quote and it said, if you can't find it, create it. And I said, really, mm -hmm. did I need to create this? Yeah, <laughs> and it was that, speaking to you. Yeah. And that's where Good Girl Radio started. I said, these conversations are so important for women for people to really um you know unearth some things for people to grow and also for people to hear in a sense uh passively mm -hmm. you know where oh i didn't know that about that person or i didn't know that about that topic mm -hmm. um so it, it's that's at the heart of it how many years has it been it's been a long time <laughs> <laughs> um i started good girl radio honestly probably about 10 years ago okay um and it just kind of started as like oh let me try this but yeah. over the past couple of years really taking it more seriously really applying my journalistic skills um and unpacking some of these stories and bringing women on um probably in the last couple of years or so how do you find your guests to come on on the program it's what's your thought process <laughs> put it on the table i know i know it's a combination of a lot of things sometimes i literally just see and hear stories in passing especially with people being so liberal on social media sharing right everything and so sometimes i'll take a screenshot or i'll inbox someone and say hey that's a great story do you mind sharing it essentially mm -hmm. in this do you mind sharing your dirty laundry but do you mind sharing this in an open forum like on a podcast that's one way also people can always inbox us and say, hey, mm -hmm. can you talk about this? Or I want to talk about this, or I just want to get this off my chest. Mm -hmm. um, that, There's, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. What are some of the recent topics that have been on? Um, let's see. Recently, we just released a podcast today, but um, recently we had a young lady on. Um, she is a gospel artist. And um, with her faith, she, you know, struggles in drawing boundaries mm -hmm. when it comes to how she's supposed to, I guess, show up in life, show up in relationships, sh um, show up even having millions of people listening to her music. And so she came mm -hmm. on and she shared, you know, this is what I'm struggling with. And for me to hear that from her, it's like, wow, you were bold enough to essentially share this is what I'm struggling with and you know you have all these people that are somewhat looking up to you and I thought that topic I thought her coming on it just it just blew me mm -hmm. it just blew me away 
Um, another topic we had, I'm thinking of like the hot, the hot topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had um, a young lady come on and she talked about how she married the wrong person. Mm. Um, I mean, she's remarried now with a beautiful little girl, but she talked about the decisions that led her up to that. Um, as well, we had another young woman come on talk that that shared that she settled in her marriage, but she unpacked what the settling really mean for her. Um, and so we have some very interesting topics or confessions. Those are, those are hard conversations. Yes, and those are hard truths about yourself to even want to recognize, let alone open up yeah. and talk about. Yeah, and it's so much the unique thing about how we. Um, structure Good Girl Radio is it does take a very strong person to be on the other end of the mic, but that other person, what I noticed is healed or they're whole mm -hmm. in that area, meaning like I'm okay with this part of me. I know that I may be flawed in this area, but it's okay. I'm growing. I know I need to make some changes or I'm either done with that situation. So I've gathered and I've learned everything I needed to learn out of the situation. So even as you're listening, you know, you're learning something like, wow, I didn't know that. Or you're even um, having the opportunity to self-assess, self -assess. like, could that be me? Mm -hmm. You know, am I in that position? Um, I could I, I could see people, uh, interviewees, sort of looking at it as sort of therapeutic. And then people who are listening, having that same sort of reaction or response. Do you find yourself in that same same situation? All the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the time because, too, it, for me, it has forced me to be um, more open, more transparent, and more, more, more vulnerable. And those are cameo and vulnerability was like, never. <laughs> it's pretty empowering when you speak with someone who's opened up like that candidly on camera or in a podcast or on social in some way, shape, or form. It's pretty, it gives you more you feel like you can do it. I yeah. can, I can speak up too. Yeah. Right. Like the whole me too movement. Yes. You know? Yeah. We've had actually, um, Tarana Burke, the founder of the me too movement. Um, she came to MSU not too long ago. And so they had kind of like a private press, um, conference and good girl radio. We got, we gained access Nice. and, uh, to hear her talk and to hear her again, share candidly, why yeah. she started this movement and um, what she needed people people to hear was, again, one of those kind of moments in life that you don't forget. What's the passion behind what you're doing? Where's that drawn from? Um, if you're asking, like, what's my why? I want to make sure yeah. I'm answering. Um, It's a lot of whys, but the one that leads out for Good Girl Radio is really because I feel as though I've been blessed mm -hmm. to have relationships with people who share, you know, their truths mm -hmm. with me, who are unapologetic, who are unabashed um, with what they're going through. And it has produced a level of growth. It has produced a level of compassion. It has even, um, revealed some, um, flaws within me. Mm -hmm. And to have that and to see how that has catapulted my growth in so many areas, I, I think it's kind of selfish for me to withhold that, <laughs> you know, um, and just, just wanting everyone to experience that same that same thing because if I were to think about the cameo from five years ago if I if I wasn't privy to certain conversations if people um, sometimes didn't call me out but called me out with love or mm -hmm. share parts of their story where maybe I judged them you know and I was like oh that's how you got there or, oh, that's why you made that decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it humbles you. Mm -hmm. And then even um, one of the f f outside of that, I was reminded because, too, when we talk about judgment, even when we judge ourselves and the opinions we have about ourselves, um, I'm a woman of faith. And I remember thinking that I was this like 
really good girl. You know, uh-huh. you follow, you follow, you know, the rules. You do what's necessary to be successful in life. But so many times, God humbled me and said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, cameo. <laughs> you got some areas you need to work on." And he and it and he humbled me through experiences, through conversations, um, and and just me wanting to share that, you know, with the world. And you and you do share that. Mm-hmm. I. I've been on your website. You share some of your ah moments and you know not so good girl moments yeah, <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Where do, where do you go beyond the microphone? Um, we we talked a little bit about. Uh, I mean, we didn't really talk a little bit about grit, glam, and guts, but mm-hmm. that's something that kind of goes beyond. Um, you know, the microphone and into girls' lives in the community. Talk about that a little bit. How they got started and. Um, Great Glam Guts, I kind of want to say it fell in my lap. <laughs> um, I was working for, at the time, a nonprofit, One Love Global, and um, you'll see the thread of faith throughout my life, but I was working for the nonprofit, One Love Global, and one of my jobs was to do projects for um, youth. Mm-hmm. And at the time, my boss, the CEO, Angela Austin, uh, she said, I want to do a girls' conference. I said, sure, no problem, I'll do it. Um, and I kind of dreaded it. I was like, I don't want to do <laughs> Do this, like, because I've done citywide projects for. That's so much work. Yes, <laughs> there's so much work to do. <laughs> I was like, I literally remember that moment, like, oh, I don't want to do this. She sent yeah. me a nice video, everything. I was like, Ugh. I said, okay, so let's let's try this. And yeah. literally, I said, okay, so I start like kind of chomping at the bit, like, what else can I do? And um, literally the next week, she came back and she said, she said, God told me this was yours. <laughs> And the first thought I said, well, God didn't tell me that. That's right. He hasn't spoken to me yet. Right. I'm still waiting. Right, right. And so here we are seven years later. Yeah, and wow. It's a passion because other things, like when you see the connection that um, people in the community have with the girls, because mind you, we have upwards of 100 girls come out for one day. And that's just in Lansing because we do it in Detroit. We do it in Flint as well on, sm- on a smaller level. But when you see the connections and the excitement and the feedback from the young ladies. And then also when you think back to, or when I think back when I was a teen and I'm like, oh, I didn't have this. How amazing that would be Mm -hmm. to continue to have this and to have young women who are closer in age to really speak into me, to believe into me and to know that they support me. Um, How that again creates that environment for growth for our future generations. And so I just continued to do the work. And now I have, I say it often, I say my kids, even though I haven't birthed any kids, but Mm -hmm. just to have, you know, young women that you feel a responsibility for to prepare them for the future. And again, having these very real conversations, like I'm dealing with depression, I'm dealing with um, an eating disorder, and then having the right tools, the people and the resources to get you help in those spaces. Do you see yourself as a a leader, a female leader, a black female leader in the community? Um, I do. I do see myself as a leader. Um, uh, I find it interesting, though, because this is something, you know, my thing is being transparent, being vulnerable. Um, And I was having a conversation not too long ago with a group of MSU students, and I was sharing not something that I'm battling with, but something that I've become more aware of, Mm -hmm. being a black woman and having uh, these different entities or opportunities for engagement and to give back and to pour into. um, Sometimes you are positioned as only a black woman, Mm -hmm. meaning that everything that I pull out or everything that I give, especially when my blackness is centered, is only for black women or is only for black girls when it's not. It's mm-hmm. something I said that if you if you receive it, you know, let this black girl magic, you know, bless you too. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and, and so that's something that I consider because um, just as much as you can give and I can receive, I can give and you can receive. But that just that's just something that kind of crosses my mind as a leader. Like, are you truly receiving everything that I'm giving to you? Mm-hmm. Um, when my experiences as a woman of color, when my experiences as a woman, you know, are at the center of, of my content or at the center of, you know, how I share. I have a hard time in my normal day-to-day regular life, um, not only, you know, trying to find time to 
uh, engage, you know, with other females, which is one of the reasons I love doing shows like this or, you know, following you and watching what you're doing, um, you know, but also um, getting out to diverse uh, uh, communities. You know, there's not a lot of diver diversity in Meridian Township. There's, mm -hmm. there's not a ton. And so I have a hard time getting myself to know other community members. And I think it's, um, it's important for cultures and, you know, whatever, man, woman, female, black, yellow, blue, purple, green, you know, mm -hmm. to, to share stories mm -hmm. cross-culturally mm -hmm. and, um, you know, to, to become more familiar. And how, so I guess I'm, I'm kind of asking, how do you, some, sometimes I find it hard to break those barriers. Mm -hmm. um, how do you break those barriers? I'm looking for advice mm -hmm. here, <laughs> you know? Um, Cause I'm like, who do I reach out to? And how do I get started? And where do I go? And I don't want to seem like, you know, like a dink or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I think, um, I mean, so just acknowledging that for anyone being in an environment that's new to them, it can be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but it's being comfortable with that uncomfortable. I'm going to mm -hmm. probably make up a word, uncomfortableness. Mm -hmm. So it's being uncomfortable with that. But also knowing that, yes, you have to take the first step. Um, and, um, and at the end of the day, um, that we there are similar threads. Like we may not know it just yet, but there mm -hmm. is something that you and I have in common. And then also that there is almost glory in our diverse experiences. Um, and it's literally taking that first step. So when you see something different, like go. Yeah. <laughs> go yeah. with like, go with all of your fears, all of your concerns, go. And when we enter those places too, because sometimes, cause this is an experience that, um, I think a lot of, uh, that from early on that black women or black people are trained or they are aware of because we go into places where we aren't the majority all of mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And so we're very familiar with that kind of being uncomfortable or we've gotten comfortable with with what that looks like and what that feels like. So over time, um, once you finally kind of step your foot or your toe in the water, or if you just jump head in, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, navigating those spaces will become um, like clockwork. And also understanding that there is a thread too of um, understanding and openness and humility when you walk into those places because it's like I'm honoring what has already been established within this culture mm -hmm. um, that I'm here to learn, um, not necessarily um, contribute, but I'm here. Yeah. I'm here to learn. Yeah, I'm here to learn. So that that would be my my take on it. What are what are some of your challenges uh, as a female uh, growing your business? Do you remember are some of your um, like the most challenging moments like, or which biggest <laughs> biggest sac biggest sacrifices you've had to make to because mm -hmm. you know it's hard getting up earlier because you have to do your makeup and all that <laughs> stuff you know I'm not wear makeup anymore um, I think one of the biggest challenges I'll say two of them is understanding sacrifice and what that looks like to me um, and also understanding that the payoff is going to come soon mm -hmm. um, when you don't have to make that type of sacrifice anymore because I think sacrifices in growth anywhere are essential. It's, a, it's just a part of the process. And so um, understanding that while like your business may not grow like you want it to grow at the rate you want it to grow, but you have to know that that payoff is coming soon, whatever that payoff looks like, mm -hmm. um, that you aren't going to be um, in this space I guess, um, all the time. And so that's been one of my struggles, essentially, you know, pumping myself up, like, Cameo, it's going to be okay. The tide is going to turn. Have you had give, like, give up moments where you're just like, Ugh. I've had frustrating moments. Like mm -hmm. you asked me before about uh, one of my podcasts, I like yelled at God. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was like in the car and, you know, listening to like an encouraging word, a sermon. And it frustrated me because mm -hmm. it felt like I've been doing all these things and I hadn't been seeing what I felt like were the fruits of my labor um, mm -hmm. at the rate <laughs> in which I wanted to see them. You were on your time, not on God's time. You have to go back to that section of the Bible. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know I, <laughs> you know I got you right yes, there. <laughs> yes. And so it was, it, it was just yeah. frustrating. Yeah. It be. was, it was frustrating. So that's been one of my, when you talk about, um, you know, one of your major sacrifices, um, and yeah, that, that's, that's been it and finding that, finding that balance. But I see the, I guess the silver lining, but also the, the whole trust the process because I see the woman that I'm becoming in this. Um, I see Cameo being more bold, being, um, more full, whole, um, and that is essential to me showing up or being present in any place because if you see me, you know, 10 years from now, you don't want a half cameo. You want a whole cameo. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. What words of advice do you have anyone out there, um, you know, th women who are going to business for themselves and just getting started off or maybe they're watching this and they're thinking, you know, I kind of want to, I'm not sure, you know. It's just two simple words. Keep going. Just yeah. keep, keep, going that's it like that's all I have even as I even as I'm growing as an individual I'm learning that I really don't know a lot <laughs> mm -hmm. but you do know a lot like maybe I'm an expert on myself and what I when what I've seen and what works for me but um it's amazing what you don't know it's amazing what you don't know um and it and that just is exponentially illustrated in the stories even that I share on Good Girl Radio. Like I just didn't know if someone could experience that. I didn't know if someone could even see God in that way. I didn't know um, mm -hmm. you could grow like that. And mm -hmm. you know, so keep pushing, stay humble. Yeah, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been, you've been doing this for how long? It's 10. 10, 10. 10. 10. Yeah. I just, I just started this training in January. It's supposed to take three weeks. I'm still doing it. And the very first day, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be this expert on this thing. And I just learned all this stuff. And I couldn't believe it. You're still growing. You're still learning. It, you know, even in my marriage and your personal relationships, it's great advice because it's so true. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, head down, just keep, I don't want to say head down, but it's just like, just keep plugging at it. Because I think even above all that, Deborah, and the reason why I continue to do this work, I, I'll say above all that or behind all that, you have to, at the same time, you have to know what you know. Mm -hmm. So if I believe that I'm called to this work, if I believe that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, that is also something that's pushing me, that's pushing me to keep going, that there is something that's past this. Like you talk about your marriage, you know you're supposed to be with this person. Mm -hmm. Just keep going, keep going. So while you don't know a lot, you there are some things that you know that you know that you know. How can people find you? Tell um, us how they can connect with you. I'm everywhere. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm on all the social media. Mm -hmm. um, so Twitter, at Good Girl Radio. Um, Facebook, we have a Facebook page, Good Girl Radio. Um, also my Facebook page, Cameo King. And um, we're on Instagram as well, at Good Girl Radio. And then obviously our website, goodgirlradio.com. I like that you keep it consistent. <laughs> I can't, I, I, know, I know so many businesses where it's like 12 different names, I'm looking for something, so. Mm -hmm. Everything. Just putting good I may, girl I may radio. use you as an example in my next <laughs> social media presentation on, on how to be consistent with your marketing. Yes, yes. I love that. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm s always good to see you. Thank you for having me. Oh. Enjoyed the time talking to you. I uh, love it. And I want to thank you for watching. <laughs>